So it feels like the transition now from the classic HR function to a people and culture function or people profession now is, is, is operating, is happening significantly. So when the TCM group was, uh, was very much a conflict management organization and a, and a mediation business, I set up a body called the Professional Mediators Association. I've always, been, I've always been a passionate advocate of collaborative working, creating connections and creating spaces whereby professionals in their field can come together, engage and support and connect, grow, inspire. And those are the four values of the People and Culture Association. It's about connecting with each other and with our organisations locally and globally, about all of us growing, growing our organisations, growing ourselves, growing our careers uh, and developing and learning uh, through that period of growth, learning together and growing together, inspiring each other for change and learning from others who have been through this journey. And, and, and we've already been running our, for the last 18 months now, our People and Culture Essentials video cast. You may have watched some of those being inspired some of the most fantastic, um, not just thought leaders, although we have had some thought leaders on the People and Culture Essentials webinars, but practitioners, people who are doing this stuff, people who are thinking about this every day as part of BAU, as part of their business as usual, and ultimately creating and co-creating systems, processes, concepts, ideas that helps to move the people profession forward. As the people profession begins to to remove itself from a, those transactional policy process procedure, those transactional systems and processes that we've often had. And as people, professionals begin to adopt those, 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 the, those theoretical frameworks, systems thinking, theory of change, positive psychology, appreciative inquiry, uh, principled negotiation, we're starting to see people, professionals, having big conversations about big theoretical frameworks that underpick the big, the big, the big transition. And we're starting to see these really exciting ideas. Positive psychology is one that I know many, many in the people profession are becoming very excited about creating flow within, within our relationships for individuals to create a happier workplace. So the language of happiness, of health, of harmony are starting to be seen as the kind of the key drivers. So the People and Culture Association will bring together uh, everyone who has, who, who, who's thinking deeply about this and bring people in and help to share and, and amplify their voices so we can inspire each other to change. So it's a membership think tank. I'll talk a little bit about the membership and how to get involved as members. As, as members. Um, so it's a membership organisation. Um, and our purpose really is to promote um, and accelerate the promotion of purpose-driven, values-based and person-centered workplace courses, cultures which, which I refer to as a transformational culture, and you may be aware, my, my latest book is called Transformational Culture, um, but a real advocate <laughs> of transformational culture fits into transformational HR. So Perry Timms, who some of you may know, a um, great friend of mine, Perry, he's on the global advisory body, or board rather, for the, um, for the PCA. So he talks very much around transformational HR, very, very much aligned to transformational leadership principles and, and, and servant leadership principles, very, very driven by those approaches. And this function around uh, the, the PCA and the people and culture function are slotted into that. You also know that a big feature that I see for the people, emerging people and culture function is the PCA function operating as a, as a, as a sort of centre of justice. So we'll talk a lot over the course of the next 12, 18, 24 months about how the people and culture profession can deliver justice in their organisations. And you'll know when I talk about justice, if you've heard me talk, you know, I'm not talking about retributive, adversarial, punitive justice, blame, shame, punish, 51% investigation, virtual test, tribunal, pass or fail, adverse outcome or otherwise, but everyone can walk away and go, well, at least we ticked all the boxes to get us through this justice process in a very functional, transactional way. That justice model, that justice paradigm is is dead or at least is dying uh, and withering on the vine. It, it offers no value, it delivers no good, it creates harm and distress, anxiety, fear. It undermines everything about what it means to be a people professional. And it undermines everything of what it means to be a human being for a great many people. So we'll be actively promoting the concept of restorative justice and transformative justice through the PCA to help people professionals who are wanting to repurpose and rethink and rewire the justice paradigms in our workplaces are blamed from, away from retribution. Time is up for retribution. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't deliver any value. So we'll focus a lot 
over the course of the 12 and 18 months about thinking about what, what it means. What does justice mean in our workplace? And how can we deliver justice, whether it's through our workplace relationships or indeed social justice in, in the more widely? So we're based in London. Um, it's, a, it's a global organisation. We've already had speakers from across, across the globe. I think we've got four or five speakers, um, one from India soon, Jonathan, someone from Brazil. So we've had speakers already from around the world. 